Welcome to the Money Over 50 podcast, brought to you by Dallas Davison and Michael Hogue from Money Over 50 Financial Advisors. This information is general in nature and does not take into account your objectives, financial situation, or needs. Therefore, you should consider whether the information is appropriate for you and your personal circumstances. If you require personal advice, please contact Money Over 50 Financial Advisors. Here are your hosts, Dallas Davison and Michael Hogue. Welcome to Money Over 50. We're back in the booth again, Michael. It's been a little while, as you've explained before. We often, when we have our busy times uh, with, our, with our work, we, we don't record for a little while. And the financial year has come and gone. We're now in here ready to expound on some pearls of wisdom or, or something. I don't know, we'll see how we go. So, Look, it's... Um, <laughs> To, it's winter today in Townsville. It's the it's the, uh, it's the twenty it's the twenty first of July two thousand twenty two. Yeah. Today is winter. We <laughs> winter we, we we hold winter in Townsville on a uh, on, on, on a on a on a Thursday on, in on a July. Thursday in in some stage in July. And, <laughs> no, all, all, all jokes aside, it's actually been a bit chilly. Yeah. Which has, in been, which has been good because, as you explained, we are in in the podcasting teepee, which has no way to get airflow through. There's, so no, the there's, no, there's no airflow. <laughs> there's, uh, the air conditioner has to be off because it's too much background noise. Yeah. Um, I still feel like John Laws and uh, <laughs> Alan Jones, you and I, like we're here early in the morning yep. doing the hard yards, um, <laughs> banging out a radio show. So. Yep. No, all jokes aside, it's good to be back. Yeah. It's good to be back podcasting. So we've we um uh yeah, there's plenty we can talk about now. We've, because we've had, a, we've had a good break. We've had a we've both got a list of a list of <coughs> topics to to get back into. So we start today with with one of yours, Michael, which is why diversify. Yeah, so uh, topical at the moment because of course we are seeing some volatility. Now yep. we haven't seen much volatility. In the last ten years, mm. um, we saw some volatility when coronavirus first broke yep. in uh, March of 2020. But you blinked and it was over. Yep. So you know, fast, fast decline yep. down by 37. Yeah, percent it, um, it it took off and 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 recovered really, really quickly. If you yep. if you weren't paying attention, yeah. You missed that if, completely. If, if you weren't paying attention because you thought the world might be ending and you had health issues to worry about, yeah. and, you know, like like everyone else did, that's what we've discussed. Is that I think, you know, you touch on that. That volatility hasn't. There has been small amounts of volatility, but it's been below average the last ten years. Yeah. And then the situations where it has occurred like that, people haven't really been paying attention as much to their to their super balances as what they would have. That, you know, that's during right. the GFC, for example. That's right. Um, Topic today I wanted to talk about is is why you would diversify. Um, here's the the seemingly attractive proposition. So the seemingly attractive proposition is okay. I could invest in you know a broad group of companies. Let's look at today. We'll be looking at the largest 500 companies in America. We could invest in that, but there's all these other companies over here that are going to outperform that because it's the new way of the world mm. and they're your Netflixes and your Facebooks and your Teslas and all those types Did of companies. You, you, really sound like um, a, you really sound like a baby boomer the way you put the S on the back of it, your Netflixes <laughs> and your Facebooks. Yeah, and your, <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm, I, You're right I, on the edge. I'm, I'm on the, uh, yeah, I'm on the, I'm on the borderline there. But, um, so you've got all of these, you've got all of these um, – and I'm only going one way, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> so you've got all of these. I mean, I've heard this over in over 20 years. This is this has manifested itself with many different things. Um, yeah, things. It's been Asset uranium. It's and, been yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, um, uh, dot com companies. It's been yeah. mining companies. It's been and and that's the thing. It's not just the last 20. Years. Like if you look, if you look at any sort of history over the last you know, hundreds of years, which which we have. You know, there was there was the Nifty Fifty in America in the yep. you know the, in the twenties. There was there's there's always been the the latest and greatest, the the darling of the share market. You know, that's the that, the, the new thing that's going to upend the whole world order, and this is going to be the only thing that makes any money ever. That's right, and that's the only thing you should be invested into. So there's a couple of things um, at that point in time. The the price has reflected everyone's enthusiasm about yeah. that, and what I mean by that is. Often, when you're reading about yeah. this new darling yeah. and this new way of the world and this new thing, um, the 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 price has already been yes. pushed up so high yeah. that you're actually buying in. Oftentimes, yeah. at, a, at quite a high yes. period of time. Yeah. Um, 
but you're not immune to it even in buying in the lows. And I'll talk to you about a personal story of mine here yeah. with Carnival Cruises. Where <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 I bought in at, the, at, at some low, at yeah. one of the lows. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's come back to that low and, and, and gone below. Yeah, right. Uh, so, I, I haven't yeah, heard so this is interesting. Full I'm disclosure not. here. So, <laughs> well, um, well, this is a really good example because the. I, I I was privy to I didn't in I didn't invest but I yeah I have mm-hmm. a coffee. This was I feel like there's a couple of things to set the scene here with is that um, the reason I think this will be a really interesting story is because it wasn't um, it wasn't a time of enthusiasm. It was actually a fairly well thought out thesis yes. at the time. It was it wasn't um, and and just to I guess. Um, before you go on and explain your whole thing and, and make you sound like a, 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 a mad a mad gambler of, of individual companies, the whole conversation we had around this was that this was basically a punt that we were that you as your financial planner we had discussed this and you had mm. allocated as as we recommend everyone does. You still do the right thing here in terms of only allocating a small portion of your money. To yeah, it was a small portion, bed, basically. It was a small portion. So we, right. you you knew that whatever was going to happen here, you had a thesis. However, it was going to play out. It wasn't going to wipe you out anyway. So that's right. Yeah, you, I'm I'm curious to, to paint us the, the so, picture. So here's here's the data. So um, to the 19th of July 2022. So the first from I've looked at this over the calendar year as we know it to the 19th of July 2022 so the S&P 500 which is the largest 500 companies in America has dropped by 17% so it's down 17% from 1 January 2022 to 19th of July 2022 so it's down by 17% now um, recognising that's a blend of the top 500 companies in America of which the companies that I'm going to read out to you right now exist within that 500. So they're a subset. Yep. And these are your Netflix, your Facebooks, your Teslas, and your Amazons. Yep. Um, so if we say that, that the blend or the average return of those top 500, if you invested and spread your money across those largest 500 companies yep. in America, over this calendar year, you're down by 17%. Yep. Um that's nothing to be worried about. No. That's normal volatility. Well, it, it is literally like the average <clears throat> intra-year decline is fifteen percent. It so is. Yeah. Discussed that that is more the norm of what you should expect when you're invested in a broad range of companies than the last ten years where we haven't seen that sort of that, the decline each year. That's right. And I'm not suggesting that the companies I'm about to read out to you um, aren't the same thing. It's 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 not necessarily something to be worried about. Yeah. I merely want to point out yeah, that, that these there's there's individual companies in there that are down by a lot further than yeah. the blend of yes. the largest 500 companies. So here they are. Netflix is down by 66% yep. uh, over the first half of this year to 19th of July. Um, Meta, which is Facebook, yep. is down by 48%. Yep. Tesla is down by 30%. Amazon is down by... 29%. Carnival Cruises, my my little baby, <laughs> is down 50%. Oh, no. Oh, uh, it's, it's, it's dropped from $20 to $10 <laughs> over that period of time. Yeah. Uh, and Bitcoin is down 50% yeah. as well. So if you look at, if you look at, yeah, this isn't an exhaustive, it's not an exhaustive list of the popular companies that everyone's been talking about. No. But it is a representative sample yeah. of what some people have put all their eggs into yep. in recent times, and 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 that could have been at any stage. So they could have bought in, yeah, <coughs> yeah, uh, years ago when the prices were down. But the weighted average is that most people buy in when the price is at yeah. its previous high. That's a really interesting one because that uh, mathematically that has to be true. We, mm. We've discussed this. Mm. The thing that makes prices go up is more people buying than selling. So yep. so by its nature more people have to have bought in at a higher price, or more dollars have to have flowed in at a higher price than at a lower yes. price because that is why the price was higher. That's right. So I just want to clarify that because that is one that I think everyone, everyone goes, yeah, 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 but, but, but what if you buy in early? Statistically, that, that can't, everyone can't, can't buy, buy in before early. the price yep. goes up. Otherwise, the price doesn't, it wouldn't have gone up. That's so, right. Yeah, sorry, man. 
No, no, a hundred percent. So, so yeah. I mean, if you if you look at that again, uh, if you're invested in the largest 500 companies, of which all these companies, except for Bitcoin, because yeah, it's, it's a separate thing, not, it's not, not a, a company, it's, not a th- <laughs> it's thin air. Um, uh, so all of those other companies, the Netflix, Facebook, Tesla, Amazon, Carnival, are all a member of those top 500 companies. So, yeah. so the fact that they've dropped by those percentages is impacting upon yes. the yeah. fact that the yeah. largest 500 companies in America has dropped by 17% yeah. over that same period of time. It's just because you're invested in some of those companies in that 500 have actually gone up over yes. that period of time. Some have remained flat. Yeah, um, it, it's, less it's such a it's yeah. such a it's such a smoother ride yeah. than than a subset of that. Yeah, and the narrower subset is p- picking one company. Yep. So if you said, okay, well, I could invest my money. Um, a, a, again, we're just using this as an example today uh, because the data is readily available. I can invest all my money in the S and P five hundred. I'll be spread across the largest five hundred companies in America, um, or I could invest all my money in Netflix because I think that's the new way yeah. of the world. Yeah. Um, then, then uh, what, what you what you're looking at is you're going wide in the first example, and you're going very narrow. Yeah. In fact, as narrow as you can go. Yeah. By investing into one company in yeah. the second example. Yeah. Uh, of just putting all of your money for, for example, into Netflix versus over the, yeah. the so you run the risk then of of a few things. Um, you run the risk of even if Netflix does recover and and grow to a new high, you run you run the risk of underperforming the benchmark. The benchmark. Yeah. So so recognize that you could take less risk and uh, by in, investing in the largest five hundred companies that is inherently far less risky yep. than investing in a one company. Um, if you take less risk, you would expect a lower return. Yep. Uh, if you take a higher risk by choosing one company over the largest 500 companies, then you would expect a higher return. In fact, the entire reason for doing that is to get a higher return. So if you don't manage to outperform the largest 500 companies in that yeah. example, yeah. then you've 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 certainly yeah. taken too much risk for, for your reward. underperformance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, mate, I've got a couple of thoughts, but I don't I don't want to interrupt the the first one. I I, I think which is maybe what you'll touch on with your story about Carnival is that the thing that strikes me is that all of those names. <laughs> If you looked at this even just over a couple of years, for example, like, yes, mm-hmm. obviously, if you'd invested in um, Facebook 10 years ago, you'd probably do, be doing pretty well. But yep. if someone said two years ago um, during when, when, and this is pretty much what happened. So COVID hit, off the back of that, uh, as, as everything went down and then as things recovered, what happened is a lot of these uh, a lot of the companies, the internet-based companies, a lot of a lot of these sorts of, um, you know, for example, Netflix, and, and we use that because that's the best one. Mm. If you'd said after COVID just hit, hey, look, we're all in lockdown, no one's going anywhere, everyone has to stay home, Netflix would be the company that you go, they, they are going to shoot the lights out here. Yeah. They are going to absolutely kill it because everyone's stuck at home, everyone's, no, no one's switching off their Netflix while they're spending you know, no. all, these, all this time at home. So... My my point here and my thought as you're talking about this is even if you get your thesis right when you're picking a company, you go, I'm going to invest in this company for this reason. Even if you get your, your logic right there, you still have to be – you still have to your pricing still has to be wrong when you buy. That, that's right. And so that's that's what happens and that's what you're, you're saying is that it's not an original thought to go, hey, we're in the middle of a pandemic where <laughs> we're all stuck at home. Um, you know, we're we're all going to be streaming mindlessly TV for six hours a day yeah. because we can't leave the house. <clears throat> hey, I should buy shares in Netflix. Yeah, that, that's the that only makes sense if you're the only one thinking that, and everyone else is panicking trying to sell Netflix, and and you're yep. buying at that point in time. But that wasn't what was happening, and as we said, that's why the price that that's why that that price sort of shot up relatively quickly is because everyone had the same thought, which is that well. I'm stuck, you know, and the same thing happened with your Amazon and your Facebook and, and like a lot of these companies. And they're all, they are all 
and this is sort of part two of that, that those companies are still all very valuable, very absolutely, yeah, you know, so, very profitable companies. So, so there's no suggestion here that these companies are going to go broke or anything no. like that. There's no suggestion. No. Um, it's it's just that 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 pricing. That thesis was right, but the pricing was wrong. The pricing already priced it in. The there. pricing was wrong. Yeah. The pricing was wrong. So yeah, like yeah. It, it had been pushed like the because you're not the only one having those thoughts. Yeah, yeah. Um, people have have put money into that, which has pushed the price up. Yeah, and the price gets pushed around. Um, we'll do a, another podcast that's coming up called the Weighing Machine. Yeah, and and, <laughs> and without giving it too much away, it's a, the market prices are uh, are a voting machine in the short term and the weighing machine in the long term yeah. what that means is that the price yeah. that you're paying yeah. could be significantly higher yeah. than what the company is really valued at yeah or what the weight of the company is yeah uh, or significantly lower depending yeah. on market yeah. market um, uh, depending on popularity depending on on conditions depending on yeah. who's got money depending and on who's throwing money towards it I'm, re- I'm reminded of I think I think it was called I did a, we did a podcast must be a couple of years ago now just remember you know I often find myself now remembering things where I go that'd be an interesting podcast I go oh no that's right we already talked about this yeah. which is the the concept of, I think the podcast was called something like is, is there any chance this is already priced in and yes. so what I was talking about at that time was uh, that was when the Commonwealth Games were going to be on the Sunshine Coast yep. for two years leading up to it everyone I talked to said we think we might buy an investment property on the Sunshine Coast because the Commonwealth Games is coming up, and I yeah. and I remember going. I've had fifty <laughs> people tell me this. Yeah, you think that I think the price is probably already reflective of this. Like no one, yeah. no one. It's not like you know the the chairman of the of the Commonwealth Games and he's giving no. you a wink and a nudge and said, "Hey, the Commonwealth Games are going to be in Sunshine Coast," and no one else knows about it. No, everyone else who's buying in the Sunshine Coast knew the Gold about Coast. It. it was, but the Gold Coast. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> But that's, 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 yeah, that's yeah. But it, that and that was my point is it didn't actually matter where it was. It, all that it, information was reflected in the price. It's reflected in the price. So it's it's reflected in the price. And, and, that, yeah. and that, you know, I don't actually have an opinion about whether that was right or bad or whatever. And I don't know where the prices have gone up, down or sideways. But yeah. the point was the reason to buy that that thesis is only the, a good thesis if if the price is wrong. And, yes. and, that's, and this is part two of my rant here is that... <laughs> When we're talking about this, and and I include myself in this, some you know, you know, average IQ, average looks, you know, bloke sitting here in regional Queensland, you know, working with retirees, building up their super balance, you know, living my standard life. Why would I think that my knowledge of the price of Netflix is is right, and everyone else's around mm. the world is wrong? When mm. you've got Guys sitting in a hedge fund in, in New York with an IQ of 300 who their whole go in life, they spend 17 hours a day trying to find an edge and trying to find a way to yep. to, to, you know, to find these mispriced <laughs> assets and to you know do all the research and understand all the background, all the rest of it. Those guys spend their whole life trying to do that and they're way smarter than me yep. and they can't do it consistently. And only, and, and, and only 30% of them get it right in any given year. Yeah. Uh, after allowing for their costs. Yes. <laughs> so, so. so you go, if they can't get it right and that's yeah. their whole go in life, when I, as a, as you know, a guy sitting here in, 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 in our TP in, here in North Queensland or even more the case when a client of mine who's an electrician or a nurse or a school teacher or a, you know, travel agent or whatever, when they sit here with me and say, hey, you know, we should buy Netflix because, because of the pandemic and stuff. It, it just I can't fathom it because you go you, no, you have to be you have to be telling me when you're telling me that you're also having to tell me that the guys in the hedge funds in New York and the people who are you know start their whole go in life is to analyze these companies yep. they've got it wrong and I've got it right yeah you think what are the odds of that yeah you yeah. Know? and and look look we um look we tune out when that question comes because yeah. there's no way that we can the, the question comes like do you yeah. think it's a good investment can you analyze that for us we so we, we have okay. no hope of being able to analyze that accurately there's no. just so many things no. even if we could accurately value it now yeah. we can't value the fact that yeah. um competition is going to flock in yeah, like yeah. stan and yeah. paramount that's and, and exactly. disney and all of that sort of stuff in the future yeah that's going to take market share off of netflix or, or whatever yeah. it is you can't you cannot you just look you just cannot factor that in yeah there's an easier way. <laughs> I was just about to say, um, this is all doom and gloom, but now you're going to tell people. Look, my main, 
Nick Murray, who's a mentor of ours uh, in the financial planning industry, has a saying that when you diversify, you you um, you cut a deal, yeah. and the deal is you can't make a killing, but you can't get killed. Yeah. And I like that. Yeah. Um, let's go through that. So if you are diversified across the largest 500 companies in America, and um, really you can. <clears throat> Be more diversified. Be more diversified than yeah. that. The standard diversification in Australia, if you're investing into global companies, is to be spread across the largest 1,500 companies in the world. Yeah. Um, if you're spread across the largest 1,500 companies in the world, let's go through that. You're diversified over many economies, mm -hmm. all geographical regions, all currencies, and virtually every single product and service in the world. Yeah. So you, 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 you own... Pretty it's much everything. Pretty, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah I'm, you I'm might a very, know the, a very small percentage of it, but you own well, you a do, share and you might of know everything. And, and people say, "Well, you don't own the the mum and pup convenience store." Well, you mightn't, but you, you, but you own Coca Cola, who sells stuff, and you own Pepsi yeah. Cola, and you yeah, own yeah, yeah, everything yeah. that gets sold through there. Yeah. So, so um, here's the kicker for me, though: you own all of those things now. So you own all those geographies, you own all those currencies, you own every single product and service that exists now, and that will exist in the future. Now, this is the important point. You own everything that's going to exist in the future because if you invest across those largest 1,500 companies, that's a living, breathing, reallocating machine. Yep. And what I mean by that is that the 1,500 companies will change over time yep. and you'll automatically be moved in you know, out, of out of one and into another. Yep. So the, the you other, can't just, make an absolute killing. You can't. You can't put... $100,000 into that and see that double to $200,000 in a month, which you can see with some individual companies if yeah. you get it right or if you yeah. get lucky. If you yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can't make a killing, but you can't get killed. Yeah. So I'll stand here and argue with anyone that that's risky. Yeah. It's volatile, yeah. which means that the price will fluctuate, sometimes down by 57% for a period of time. But volatility is different to risk. Volatility is the short-term fluctuation up or down yep. um, that uh, that irons itself out and recovers. Yep. Risk is the risk is the chance that what you've invested into, and if you invest into one company yep. or two companies loss. and you get narrow, there is a risk that that company will drop from a hundred dollars a share to ten dollars a share and never return. Yeah. Uh, or there's a risk that will drop from $100 a share to $0 and go yeah. out of business. Yeah. So you just touched on a point there. Like I think that is actually a good visual way to think of it. If if you're diversified into those 1,500 biggest companies and, and you are essentially invested in everything or some something that touches everything, for that to go to <laughs> zero, everything has to go away. Everything yep. has to disappear, essentially. I can tell you you've got bigger Big, problems. Way bigger problems. Way bigger problems. Bigger problems than the value of your superannuation fund yep. um, at that point in time. So something something really bad has happened. Yep. Um, now, yeah. Now, I just wanted to say another point before we before we wrap up. Um, what we The way that we approach this is the so – when we talk about diversifying, we're talking here about diversifying across companies. What, what yep. I don't – tend to record what we don't tend to recommend and what people um, do there is to diversify across asset classes so that's a good point Ellis. so we're, we're saying if you own a share of the biggest you know 200 companies Australia, 1500 companies all around the world that that <laughs> is you are like we said you're touching everything yep. you don't also then need to go right well with my super i want some of that i want some of that money to be allocated to a residential property in Brisbane yeah. and I want some of it to be sitting in a term deposit account with NAB and I want... Look, that's that's a really good point. Over the last 20 years, I can't tell you how many times people have come to me and said, yeah, yeah this plan, it's working, but, yeah, but, but want, shouldn't we spread yeah. our eggs? Yeah. Uh, hang on a sec. You got 15... You are, you are, you, your <laughs> eggs are spread. Yeah. It comes to you on one piece of paper yeah. or it comes to you on one line on a spreadsheet, Yeah, but... Yeah, you know, we we um, within that million dollar number yeah. on which takes up one cell yeah. on one spreadsheet. Yeah, that's that 
that that's spread all over the world, all over different currencies, all over yeah, yeah, you know, different products and services. In fact, almost every product and service. Yeah, and um, uh, and over fifteen hundred companies. And we you know we've spoken about if you had to go through, if you had a stack of paper on your desk, yeah. where you had to flick through, yeah. fifteen hundred sheets saying. of paper, yeah. showing you how much yeah. your in million each, dollars had yeah, in each company. in each company, it would take you. Like a good portion of the week, so yeah. um, I think that the the it tricks people because yes. that comes to them on one statement or one piece of paper, but yeah. that they really can't be any more diversified. No. Thank you for listening to the Money Over Fifty podcast with Money Over Fifty financial advisors. For more information and resources, visit the Money Over Fifty website mo50.com.au. We look forward to catching up again soon.